All right, hello and welcome to the Fragments of Remains, session 25. We have one player running a bit late. Try to give him as much time as possible to hop in, but unfortunately, it's just a few more moments behind than anticipated. So, getting tonight going with Zanashi. Zanashi, how was your week? Yeah, it's been pretty good. Um, can't think of anything out of the ordinary that happened other than just staying busy, man. Well, staying busy is always good. Um, get all those shelves finished. Oh, no, man. I've got... After I brought my stuff back from storage, it's like, man, i got to make more room just to... Uh, <laughs> You know, be able to get to the one side of the garage to start making a workbench and stuff like that. Well, in time it'll be done, then well worth it. Modar, how was your week, bud? Hi, yeah, things have been good. Good, busy holiday weekend. Uh, ready to get going here, getting ready to travel tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, I'm on vacation now, so if nothing, that's Sick. always good. And because I feel like Alencia might have like the biggest news to share, Alencia, how was your week? Um, I now am being an adult. Hooray! I, <laughs> I've been hired due to sheer luck. <laughs> it happens to the best of us, man. And. It may seem bad now, but when you get that first paycheck, you'll be like, oh, this is worth it. <laughs> I was I wasn't expecting it to be this soon, but like I got a text saying, hey, um, are you still interested? And I was like, yeah, I was like, OK, sure. And <laughs> they, I guess they saw the applications that I made on January 22nd and now it's in April. So they were like, maybe this guy still wants to apply. <laughs> That's how Making it happened. Making way through the list. Yeah. But again, congrats. Sure, it's it's definitely going to be an experience to say the least. And when, I don't know, I've never heard anyone that says they like hated their first job. They had stuff they hated about it, but it was usually more typically fun. But. Hopefully that's it. That's what it is for you. I hope so. But with that, um, Togo being the absentee, of course, which one of you would like to take the lead on the recap before we get into tonight's game? All right. Um, well, let's see here. We picked up last week after our uh, fight in the caves, uh, chasing back the uh, lizard folk. We managed to uh, find some more remains of some ships in that cave, looked those over, did what we could with that, and then uh, continued our travels to race. Or, I'm oh, sorry, we went back to the goblin encampment um, to start with and uh, convinced after they managed to get their horde for the most part together uh, convinced them to travel north to Mito and we continued south to race leaving uh, a note for the druids to let them know what was going on and that we had taken care of the lizard folk uh, was there anything else that happened there that I'm missing guys We're gonna fight, and then well, no, that was yeah. And then we continued to race. Um, it's a very uh, rural kind of area, getting a little a little kind of older style buildings, uh, very wood and such uh, roofs and thatched roofs and things like that. We managed to find the 
Ooh, uh, the guard captain. Oh, uh, Chilson, Captain Chilson, and uh, mm-hmm. talked with her for a little while. She told us about a fight, that, or a tournament that was going on that we, we actually already knew about that the druids had told us. And we have gone to the... Oh, what the hell is the name of that? The brewery? Yes, hey, how's it going? Sorry, there was a 21-year-old... Uh... It was beautiful and deep and rich, and it was a fantastic wine. <laughs> I was sharing it with my mother for her birthday, but all good. <sighs> uh, I didn't think that's where you were going with that. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> too. I was like all right, good for him. Um, uh, and then uh, they are. We are currently. Uh, we stayed overnight at the in and at one of the inns and we are on the way to the fight we found out that they drew numbers uh, Zanashi and Alencia and they're in the first round is that correct or something along those lines they're on the same side of the bracket okay Okay, that's what it was yeah Yeah, Yes there was a slight misunderstanding Alencia and Zanashi did believe that they were the only ones um, fighting, or uh, at least being in like the first round fighting each other. But after speaking with Mayor, figuring out that's um, not the case. Okay, yes, that that was the that, that was where the confusion yes. came from. Yep. What you said was correct. Um, I don't know, uh, Zanashi. Did I miss anything? Uh, I guess not. I mean, I guess it's kind of known that I'm going to try to slip off during the main uh, fight. And I, I wasn't entirely paying attention. We we went over the uh, was this last session or the session before, where basically. Alicia opened up about herself and we found like boat parts and that was the beginning of last session end of the session before yeah. is the where we found the boat parts was when we cleaned out the area with all the lizard men and then the part you were talking about was as we were investigating the boat beginning of last session okay that was fun <laughs> You don't want to comment on your heavy-hearted uh, explanation of a bit of your past? Uh, no, I need a few weeks to recover. Noted. Well, while there... Excuse me. While there was a, a bit of RP um, last session, a lot of it being... Um, focused on the brawl once you all had made it back to race still with the intent of each of you looking for uh sanser it will bring us to the morning of um may 1st so as we continue our story on may 1st just as each of you wake up in your rooms the boys in one the girls in the other back in the belly hot brewery as the smell of fresh roast fills the air the sounds of work and Mayor shouting and laughing below as the business hours for this dwarf seem to be starting fairly early, even before the sun rises. You can see just the little bits of the sun trickling in through uh, the shutters that are on each of your windows before hearing uh, from outside of the brewery. Hey, knock that off. That shit or all. I'll make you into jerky, you hear? Damn horses and me being so damn short. Ugh, sick of this thing already. It's only been here for one day. Who's he bitching about? Probably our horse. Yeah, I don't have a horse. Probably your horse. Uh, I believe that the greatest horse to ever live, Bill Lorenzo, 
valiantly was slain in uh, shielding us from the uh, fearsome lizard men. So I don't have a horse either. A smart arse horse. Y'all ain't talk about your horse like that, Modar? He has no opinion one way or another. Apparently not. Then uh, Modar finds out he was muted the entire time. <laughs> I went maybe, down it. But up, but up, but up. Oh, there he goes. Is he back? He's obviously having a Discord issue then. <laughs> I'll head downstairs and look about for finding some kind of breakfast. Ah, good morning to you. Well, morning. Did you find it uh, nice to sleep? I was exactly what I needed for a place to sleep and catch a few hours. Good, good. Uh, what, what can I do yet for you? Looking for a bite to eat, perhaps a bit of the hair of the dog for the morning. Ah, a little column A, a little column B, if you have it. I wouldn't want to put you out too much, but... Give you a bit of a wink as he, like, kind of, uh, tisk on his, uh, teeth, like, clicks him a bit, and, uh, points and snaps his fingers pointing towards you. You got it. Well, it's not much, but we we do have a a, a nice uh, a nice stewed golden for the morning. Lots of vegetables, a little bit of meat, uh, bits of potatoes, things of of that nature. Helps you get a nice hearty breakfast in the morning. But, uh, of course, we just got our standard ale. I'll take it. Well, uh, uh, just uh, three silver, please, and. And enjoy. So who do you mostly sell to around here? Are you mostly supplying innkeepers and other folks like that with the... Uh... Oi. Well, my uh, biggest customers, of course, the guard. While they're off duty, they like to enjoy their free drinks in the tower. Uh, uh, makes sense. Of course, they don't get it uh, free from me. It's uh, all paid for by the captain. Something nice to give back to the troops. Let them know that their their hard work is appreciated. That's nice of the captain. Was uh was the rest of your friends a little bit of an early riser in comparison? That's when one of them is coming down. Ah, oh, there's Silencia, but one of them seems like he's got a bit of a jaw ache today. Not being super talkative, but that's okay. Oh, speak of jaw aches, look at this! And then, uh, Mare will tilt his head back, separate his beard a bit, and where you can still see where there's quite a bit of uh, beard hair in the, way, in the way, he has a nice hoof print right on the bottom of his jaw. Huh! Lordy! A fucking horse kicked me. I'm just like perfect uh, head level for it, though. It's just unlucky. Modar said his headset seems to have stopped working, by the way. Oh, no. We're going to have to weaken him, Bernie said. <laughs> I guess he's going to have to type tonight. Uh, I would suggest just trying to jump on your phone I don't know if you... I'm guessing you can hear through the headset, but, you know, guessing. I would use the uh, phone for talking. Just mute it while you listen on the headset if you can. That'd be the only thing I can think of, but I don't know. I don't think you can use the headset and the phone at the same time. Well, 
That was interesting. Random headset pooped out. Huh, seemed like my headphones stopped working for a second. What's going on? Well, other than Modar um, trying to figure out um, either, I guess, how to hear us or talk with us, I'm not 100% sure of the situation. But I guess him just trying to figure that out. But Alencia, you said that you made your way down? Yep. Ah, uh, there she is. You're going to be competing this afternoon, aren't you? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, but I can. Right. Sorry. Mm. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. You can't help when equipment stops working. Yeah, it decides that. <laughs> There's usually not even a warning. Well, do you, do you know when you'll be fighting? Surely after I eat a wonderful breakfast. Well, I, uh, I've got a nice stew going. If you care to partake, he'll gesture over towards uh, Togo, where you see him sitting with a bowl and nice little tankard of ale as well. I look up with a mouthful of stew <laughs> and a thumbs up. He seems to like him, so I'll have the same. No way else. Alright, what should you be drinking? Just water? If you wouldn't mind. Give you a little bit of a nod, and then go uh, retrieve a bowl and a tankard of water for you. So, Modar, I don't know if you could hear us or not, but I mean, I guess the only thing that, like, you really you've missed is just people picking up their breakfast and, uh, Mayor, um, bitching about your horse in the morning and then, uh, while serving breakfast, showing Togo and Alencia that he had been kicked in the jaw. Well, that should be able to be mended easily. Yeah, let me take care of that for you. Next Alencia. Alencia, wait. What? Oh, no, no, it's fine. It it, it, bar it barely hurts. It just knocked me on my ass. Oh, was that for any to him? Uh, no, it's I... fine. I don't understand. Is he hurt or not? No, he's okay, Alencia. Oh, okay. My apologies. Togo doesn't want you getting yourself into any trouble. That's all. I, I don't know. Uh, I didn't know I was prone to trouble. Not that. It's the uh, rules and regulations here. We're not exactly sure on what they are. So I'd rather treat them with caution until... Oh, remember I, the city remember. is, uh, yes. At this point, each of you see, uh, Mayor looking, uh, a bit taken back now, learning that at least two of you are somewhat of magic users. Well, uh, as your friend said, it, it, it's definitely illegal here, and, you know, I, I hope that you weren't doing anything, uh, that would bend or break those rules in the ro in the rooms last night, because that's so we have not, to report no. it. No, no, no. We would never do such things for you to put you in that type of type of position. However, I, with my upbringing, I use magic to help other people, especially I... if they're injured. Don't think what you do qualifies versus. I think what you do is closer to what the druids do. 
in terms of something natural. But just to be safe, I wouldn't want to put our good friend here in any kind of position. You're right. I, I'm sure you, well, would rather not have that happen either. And So if people get hurt, they, they just do it physically? I would um, assume so, yes. Unless the uh, druids take care of it. I, I don't know, it just seems... I don't know, well, we'd have to ask the ex expert here. How does healing work around here? Are are there healers that are permitted to use magic, or is all healing non-magical in this city? Well, the the druids will help if it's if it's really needed, but most of it's just unnaturally. It'll normally take a couple of days, but... You know, maybe in a week's time you'll be good as new. That's what I Seems think. Seems inefficient. <laughs> ah, they're different than you all are up there, Modar. Well, if anyone is hurt after the fight... I think they expect over. you to take a nice long rest in order to uh, get back to your fighting spirit. That's true for me, but I'm more concerned about... Um, after the fight is over, if anyone has suffered extreme injuries, I do know how to put a leg in a splint, if you know what I mean. That's fair. Anyways, do you know what time you were fighting at? Zana or Zanashi's not down here, is she? We're fighting at noon. noon? I'm, a, I, I'm down, but I'm just kind of being a little discreet on the other side of the room. So you guys both fight at the same time? We fight each other. Uh, oh. I mean, I, that's what I was told. I guess I wasn't there, was I? I did hear that one. What time is it now? It's still fairly early in the morning. Um, the sun just uh, rising. It's Somewhere in between 6, 6.30 in the morning. You have, I mean, quite a few hours until uh, noon. I stand up. I am probably going to go wander around the city some, see what I see. Ah, and I will uh, look at our host and say, uh, is there anything you would see in this city if you were to come here and travel anything in particularly not out of the ordinary but interesting any favorite spots besides this one we're in right here ah nothing too fancy here that's why i like it nice and simple it's fair then i'm gonna head towards or really and uh, bury nice and hair me out and just kind of head to them and just see what they are. And that's what I plan on doing for a okay. few hours before heading to the fight at noon. The rest of you? Um, I'm going to go shopping. What were we saying, New Year? She's just going to exercise, and then afterward we'll arrive mm. a bit early. Okay. And and uh, Modar is going to go start uh, looking around, seeing if you can find any bookshops or any sort of libraries, information-based uh, areas. Okay, um... So, with most of the things that each of you are looking for being in the uh, market area, um, it's not too far away. You see some of the shops opening just over the courtyard. Um, if you all wish to go together, you can. If you wish to just go separately with your uh, own um, intents, uh, like, you know, for an example, Modar looking for uh, more specifically a bookstore, um, then, you know, that's up to each of you. But since everything's fairly close, or really the blacksmith and the forge, 
of course, uh, the Belly Hot Brewery, the brewing company, and Tavern. Uh, wouldn't it be nice? A woodworking shop. The Silver Tusk uh, is a gem, book, and trinket shop. Very nice. Uh, fruit and vegetables, uh, and along with uh, farming supplies. And Hair Me Out is a tanner and leatherworking shop. All roughly like in the same appearance. Some of them having different characteristics. For example, um, the blacksmith and forge, or, or really having a bit more of a stone built around before it has a um, wooden overhang in the front. At a very nice, I'm going to go and grab like a... Uh... I'm assuming, do they have grapes there? Indeed. Grab like a, is it a bushel? Is that, what, what is it, the term for a, a collection of grapes, some grapes? It's either a bushel or a stock. I'll get, is a stock considered like a... An, like a more of an abundance? I'm guessing that's what it would be. I'm not 100% sure, though. Um, I'm going to go and get some grapes. I, I don't know. The third. I'll, I'll, I'll just say that. That very nice. And then at, I'm going to look at... Was it Hair Me Out was the leather worker? Yep. I'll just peruse there and see if I find anything that looks like it might be uh, better quality than the leathers that I'm wearing, because I'm currently wearing studded leather. Okay, go ahead and give me an investigation check, and then I will get back to you in just a moment. Um, Alencia, so you, since you said that you were going to be doing uh, some, like, working out and stuff, um, there's not really much that, um, you know, you need to really worry about, just more of uh, waiting for time to pass until noon. Unless you have anything else that you'd like to do in that time frame. Um. I I mean, once I I said I was going to arrive a bit early, and it was just she would just be curious about some of the regulations. All right. So, um, when you do arrive a bit early, a few hours, um or a couple of hours before the brawl begins, you'll see that a decent amount of uh, patrons have gathered at the Maiden in Cauldron. Um, you'll also note that there are uh, orcs, humans, minotaurs, and centaurs all gathered. And there is this odd looking uh, orc, um, a, a group of orcs that you haven't, seen before they seem almost identical except for they have just slightly different facial characteristics than the green orcs but and these ones are blue but as uh, you look around you will see uh, Sanzer who took your sign up order uh, to enter hello Ah, yes. What can I do you for? I was curious about the regulations before it began. In what regards? Uh, you punch each other, kick each other with fists, and use whatever you can. No weapons. Of course, no magic. Needs to go without saying. To what extent do you disavow disallow weapons being used? To the fullest extent. Just fists right. and feet. But that can be ambiguous, if you understand. For instance, I could put extra padding on my fists. Or perhaps metal dibbits. Hmm. Well, bare knuckle. Only what you came into the world with on your person. Of course, you'll be fully clothed, but this 
Should cover your question. The centaurs will be able to use their hooves as the minotaurs can use their horns. But you, your fists, feet, and, well, I don't think you'll want to damage that pretty face of yours there, elf. That would be nice to avoid. Um, so these gloves are not suitable then. <clears throat> Um, you just have, like, silk gloves on, I believe. Yeah, just regular Yeah, those black. are fine. Yeah. And, um, am I allowed to keep my heels on? Sure. I don't see why you'd want to, uh, fight in there with those heels, though. And as, uh, you look where she's gesturing, you just see this, uh, circular pit in the middle of the tavern about 10 to 15 foot down where benches and um, tables, chairs, and everything have been set up around in in order for people to view. Most don't understand my fighting style, but I, well, I guess I hope I, I'll surprise people, I suppose. All right, um, Modar and uh, Zanashi, whichever, excuse me, whichever one of you would like to go first. It doesn't much matter. Um, like I said, I'm just kind of looking around the shop, seeing what I can find. Kind of like before, I understand that there's no magic shops because of what it is, but anything that would have a, a history, a library, uh, storybooks that may have some relation to... Uh, things that happen in the real world and it's not it's not anything near what uh the library in vala is but there is a i mean a fairly small collection of uh historical um and fantasy style and just uh, various amounts of different uh, books there are uh, four bookshelves full that line the west wall I'm looking for anything history to start with. The oldest history I can find. Okay, go ahead and give me an investigation. And then we'll get back to you in just a moment. Uh, Zanashi? Um, I want to go to a shop and look for some oil. Okay, uh, you'll be directed to... Um, uh, or really, where there are uh, human smiths. Excuse me. I'm looking for a bottle of oil. Mm. How big do you want it? Just about enough to fill a water skin or maybe just a, just a half tankard full? Enough to fill a water skin would be enough. No, yeah, we can part with that. Then, do you have any magic shops like someone who would sell a potion? <laughs> Not anywhere near here. That oil uh, will run you one, one silver piece, though. Here's two. Appreciate it. Bob. Who are you representing today? What tribe are you from? I am from Clan Zanashi. Ah, oh, independent fighter. Looking forward to see you uh, going about there, then. Thank you. <clears throat> All right, sorry about there uh, not to be in anything uh, more to what you're looking for, but anyone with those capabilities usually starts to head up to Lales. 
Maybe Moga. I understand. I thought I'd ask anyway. Well, good luck to you. Same to you. Togo, um, from your look around in the shop, nothing uh, particularly uh, catches your eye, but the uh, shop owner will uh, motion and gesture you towards uh, a studded leather armor that he claims is the the most immaculately made uh, leather that he's ever done. Hmm. I'll, I, I, I'll, I'll pick up the set and look at it kind of feel the weight of it, look at it, kind of tap on it, then tap on mine and hit it in spots like over my heart and in my back and spots that I think I may get attempted to be stabbed at. I mean, it feels it feels pretty good, um, but just while you were looking over the wares, nothing seemed to like really like pop, if you will. Okay. Hmm. I'm assuming this was in the wares when I was looking over it, and he just drew my attention to it. Exactly. From mentioning like what you were looking for, um, he will um, point out that. Well, this is quite a bit of a. Hey, this is a, a bit of a uh, more of expensive wear of mine. It will require, uh, well, quite a hefty amount of gold if interested. Hmm. How much would it be uh, running, just so I can? Well, this one in particularly would cost. Oh, I'd I'd like to get somewhere near six hundred, six hundred and fifty gold. Hmm. I'll have to uh, I'll have to think about that one, but I I, I I will keep you in mind. I'll be around for a couple of days, so I'll go and look at what I have and come back here if I think I can <clears throat> work that out. But thank you for your time, sir. Well, perhaps if you're staying to place some bets on the fights, if you're lucky enough, you'll be able to afford this in a few days without ever even having to move. Are you going to enjoy the uh, fights yourself? Ah, everyone will be. At, it's noon today. All the shops will be closed, and oh, nearly everyone will be at, at uh, the tavern. All right. Well, I am excited. Thank you very much for your uh, help. I appreciate you. He gives you a bit of a respectful uh, bow. Hopefully, uh, fortune will favor you. And then if you, then I myself. Well, good luck to the both of us. Modar, as you look over uh, the books, um, from the 21, um, the 17 on uh, for your roll, and then the 4 from Timeless Precision, you will actually find um, two books that quite quickly catch your eye. One. I will definitely go and grab that, pick that up. One named uh, the Elysium Dynasty and the Five Ambassadors. All right. I will grab that. Elysium Dynasty and the Five Ambassadors. Indeed. Um, also to note on that, uh, it is volume one. And the other thing that uh, catches your eye is um, the celestial veil in the surrounding sea. I will definitely grab both of those books um, and move to... Um, is this a store or a library that I'm in? It's... It's a store, but it has, like, enough room for, like, you to, like, sit comfortably and study as well. Um, but it is mainly a shop. Shop. I will, um, I'll take these two books to the 
um, to the front and ask the shopkeeper how much uh, for these two books. Uh, those there, we've had them for quite some time. I'd be happy to part with them for uh, a gold. Single gold piece? None. They're yours. Uh, truly, that uh, very much. Thank you very much. Uh, this here says uh, Volume 1. You wouldn't happen to know or have uh, any of the other volumes or know where I might be able to find the other volumes once once I finish with this. <sighs> Libraries and glints are always a good place to check. I'm surprised you haven't found more information on them. Don't, doesn't uh, Vala have quite a grand uh, library and study itself? Oh, it does. Absolutely, it does. But uh, I'm down here. Uh, well, you know, I got moved. Uh, I've been traveling with friends and we're doing research and I can't quite travel with an entire library now, can I? And they don't like things uh, leaving for long periods of time uh, out of the library. Things have a tendency of happening on the road. Well, that yes, makes quite a bit of sense. Um, well, those would be my two best guesses. If those fail, then... Well, I'm, I'm out of ideas. Perhaps they don't even exist anymore. Vanish from this world forever. Oh, few things vanish forever, wouldn't you say? But thank you very much. Uh, and if you do get anything else in on on the uh, Celestial Veil or Alencia, I am very much, uh, or, or sorry, uh, the, uh, the Elysium Dynasty, I am very much uh, interested if if something arrives before I depart. I will um, and, keep and an I eye will, out for it. And I will slide an extra five silver on top of those two gold. I will make sure I speak to my contacts today. And I will take the... Uh, books and oh would you mind if i stayed here and uh, studied for a little while before the tournament i don't really feel like going all the way back to my room before that starts uh please do um hopefully if any more customers <coughs> arrive you aren't uh, too disturbed there's plenty of uh, candles to light if there's not enough uh, sun from the window thank you much sir i'll sit down and start scrolling through um the Elysium Dynasty and the Five Ambassadors to start with. Okay. So with the amount of time that you have before um, the brawl begins, if you wish to get there on time, can you roll me an intelligence check at disadvantage? But if you don't care about getting there on time, then we'll figure something else out, of course. Um, to start with, yeah, just, I'm just going to start glancing through, uh, yeah, I'll do that to, the, the disadvantage to start with. I, I want to be there just in case something happens. Just a straight intelligence check. Indeed. What is that? So while you're not able to um, find anything of like major significance, there are a couple of points uh, that you do find that kind of ring a bell. Enough for you to uh, want to make a mark of it to return to this at a later date for a more intensive study. Understood. All 
All right, so if nobody has anything else, um, we can just move along straight till noon where um, everyone can gather at, at the uh, Majorin and Cauldron. I do, but I'm going to message it to you. Got it. Uh, so Nashi and her sneaky sneak. We'll uh, remove the adhesive from her glasses and take it off and remove her um, frilly leather jacket that she always wears and everything else of her belongings aside from uh, Uh, what else would... I don't think anything else would be carried. Yeah, according to the rules. So she would still have her gloves and heels on. Togo's there. Togo's pumped. He's ready to see some action, yo. He's, like, he is all ready to go. Okay. Well, with each of you gathering into the tavern, I'm going to move each of you to this map. All right. And of course, gathered inside, you can see quite an abundance of individuals. Um, humans, minotaurs, centaurs, orcs. Um, practically the only thing you don't see here at this point are uh, goblins that you uh, know to be in the nearby area. What well, I will note is with each of you arriving a bit a moment of time still uh, early before noon, you will, uh, all three of you will be gathered over at uh, a table that was empty where you will then see Zanashi enter the tavern. Zanashi, would you like to describe what they see? Yeah, I walk in and, uh, I'm wearing a robe. Um, my face looks a little oily. But other than that, you know, I'm kind of keeping to myself, you know, a little bit of a distance from you all. Like I'm getting in my, my frame of mind for this fight. Do I think that Zanashi looks like she's being intentionally weird or has something besides... <laughs> Sucking that toy that she... <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I don't want, like... I don't want, like, specifics, but, like... I I get the feeling Zanashi has something up her sleeve. You definitely notice I have no shoes on. Okay. You, just, you can see basically, you know, my ankles because I'm wearing a big robe. Like you can see my ankles to my feet, uh, and then uh, I'm kind of keeping my hands kind of tucked in. Got Long it. sleeve robe. Anything else about her demeanor that I might notice? Either nervous or excited or just bored. Um. She definitely looks like she's got a surprise. All right. Where am I on this map? I didn't put myself on this Wait, map. Would you expect you anything less? I, I, I don't expect anything else. So, of course, as uh, each of you walk in, this uh, two-storied tavern, the first story made out of stone, the second out of the timber... 
Each of you will note that there are more than enough uh, barmaids and uh, bartenders that are serving the crowd. Everyone seems to be uh, getting either one of three items, fish, pork, or chicken. And there are three barrels of ale that line the back wall behind the bar and where each of you can uh, see that there are bottles of ale on some of the table or, or of wine on the, some of the tables as well. And as each of you find a place to kind of uh, mosey about, waiting for things to begin, then then you'll see um, a fe the female dwarf uh, that Zanashi and uh, Lincia had met before, and Alencia you had spoken to previously, uh, just today, make her way to the center of the arena. Some dried blood spattered on the sand floor below stains it as the light of the chandelier hangs above, illuminating the floor quite nicely in order to see the fights. Well, seems that we have uh, plenty of people here. Let's go ahead and start collecting uh, bets for the first round. Will, and you'll see her pull out a piece of paper, uh, parchment, um, from her robes. And as she unravels it, looking at it, um, Sog the Orc from the Salty Winds tribe and the champion, Yudin Centaur of the Shadow Lion tribe, step forward. This is when an orc will make their way down and into the arena, then quickly followed by a large centaur. Well, of course, the odds are going to be favoring our champion, but which will you place a bet on? Who wins the first round when the brawl begins? Where do I go to to place my bets at? So, um, the dwarf will make her way around the uh, tavern and, like, begin going to each table, each individual, uh, along with the barmaids as well, collecting uh, each of the bets. So whenever um, one comes up to you to place the bet, you can. But for convenience sake... Um, how we're obviously going to handle it is each of you will type in what you wish to place your bet on and then knowing who the favorite is of course you'll still have an income coming back but not as much as if you were to bet on the underdog so if each of you would like to place a bet for the first round please do so now can I message it to you in uh, 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 message uh, yeah, message me on Discord, and then that way it'll be easy to keep track. Uh, before the dwarf comes around, I would like Alencia to insight check the two competitors, just to make sure. Okay, um, one of these guys was from my tribe? Uh... No. Okay. They did mention tribes, but I mean, none that caught your ear. I don't know these tribes. No, they are. Sorry. Uh, what do I get with a 12? All right, so on the uh, 12 from the ends, you'll see that, I mean, not only is the centaur, I mean, twice the size of this orc, um, but 
definitely has quite a bit of reach and weight on him as well. Uh, and the muscles, you can see that they're just like bulging. On the left arm, you'll see that there are these little, um, almost look like knocks, um, like little scars that go all the way down the left arm from the shoulder down to the wrist. On the orc, I mean, from hanging out with Zanashi in comparison, you'd feel that he is uh, definitely a, a little out of his league here. Some of the other competitors look like they might be able to hold a little bit more of their own. Would uh, anyone else like to place a bet? No, I'm good. Uh, no, Moto's not placing a bet, but I would like to look around and see if I can notice anything strange, like anybody manipulating things supernaturally through magic, like in the once the match gets going and as things go around. If that makes sense. Oh, yeah. Um, so, I mean, after all the bets are collected, uh, you will just hear uh, Sanzer uh, yell out, Well, that's the last bet. The match will begin in one minute. Grab your drinks. This is going to be, well, probably a quick one. Don't blink. You'll miss it. The orc just looks back. At Sanzer, let's back, uh, lets out like a bit of a snarl and like growls and then begins to like clench his fist, <laughs> looking over towards the centaur. And you see, um, Zanashi, you'll notice like this like rage beginning to build up. And then when the fight begins, it um, will be over fairly uh, quick, but not as quickly as may have been assumed. The centaur will just run forward and then swing uh, twice, uh, connecting on both sides of the uh, orc's face, once on the left and once on the right. The orc, taking quite hefty blows, seems to be able to withstand them a bit as uh, he steps forward, Swinging not once, but twice himself, striking the centaur back. You hear a crack in the leg as the centaur lets out a large ween, then turning, taking a step back, and then back kicking into the orc's face, sending the orc flying across the arena. Where the orc hits the wall, slides down, a little bit of blood begins to trickle down from the wall where the impact is made. As you see the door or the orc's eyes get a little heavy, the lids slowly closing. The centaur will begin to let out a ferocious war cry. Well, Zanashi, that looked like that could hurt. And when the centaur begins to make uh, his way out, look at you, Alencia, and then go, You're in my seat. I'll just sidestep a couple feet. I was standing up, but yeah. Well. <laughs> Most of you uh, will be going home with at least a little bit of coin tonight. The second round, while payments are being made, will be... Tice Sternbane of the Deadbones tribe. 
and Brug the Orc from the Merc Eye. And those are the two that'll step forward. And then if you guys would like, I will um, PM you um, for those who uh, place bets on what the win was. But if not, I can just, I can just tell you. I don't think I would, I don't think I would bet this one. Um, mm. What were the names again? And then I'm gonna do it. Just checking them out, seeing what I think of the the uh, competition. Ty Sternbane, a human from the Dead Bones tribe, that mm -hmm. you all know that like to pretend to be as orc as they can. And then Brug, orc of the Merc Eye tribe. From the look of it, this. I mean, this seems to be way more of an even match. <laughs> it's This could go either way. So it's Merc is the second person? Berg. Berg, that's it. Uh, I was just going to sit back and watch again, not getting involved in any of the betting. Wants to look around and see who's paying attention, who's paying a little more attention than they probably should be. No one seems to be paying like too much mind um, to this one. You can see a lot of the attention has gone back to like a bits of conversations at the table. The first fight with the champion gathering the most attention. This one doesn't seem to be as interesting to the others. All right, yeah, no, just gonna watch. So with this fight being a lot closer, the underdog from the bets being placed seems to pull it off. Most of the patrons being orcs here seem to have favored the orc, while the humans seem to favor the human. But with just the sheer amount of numbers, the orc being the heavy favorite. Well, not the heavy, so to say, but the, the favorite. Um, but the winner will be the human. Tice Stern Bane, which uh, then should be good on the bets. Then third round will. Tagar, Fist Slayer, Minotaur, no tribe affiliated, and Alencia, step forth. Okay. Pip squeak. <laughs> Look at that big motherfucker. I'll go ahead and insight check him. <laughs> <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, he's not carrying a great axe. <laughs> I, I know that. I just okay. she wants to make sure this is part of her strategy. Fucking Lissy's always <clears throat> shaking.
Um, as you take a look over, you can see where one of the horns is chipped. He definitely does not seem to be worried about using his horns in a combat from the look of it. While still quite large and muscular, um, you can see that there are a few weak points as well. Definitely a bit slower due to just the sheer size. Perhaps you can outmaneuver. <laughs> Bless you. Oh, shit. Sorry, I forgot. I'm not on push to talk now. Um, is it safe to assume his turning radius isn't up to, up to par? Uh, roll me... Roll me a history check as well. So Zanashi, how much, what chance do you really give her, honestly? You mean Alencia? Yes. Um, can Alencia's each of you? more powerful than you realize. I, mm. I predict Alexia is going to win. I'm thinking the same thing. This could be easy money. Um, will each of you roll me an initiative roll? Um, all four of you. All of us? Yep. Well, so far, it seems that the Minotaur is the heavy favorite. Favorite over the small, puny elf. What can she even do? Perhaps make you rich? I'm putting 10 gold on her. Oh, sorry. So, so we got to message you that. Don't you don't say. have to message me. That's just what uh, they chose to do. My guess is because they don't want you to realize how addicted to gambling they are. <laughs> what are you talking about? Addicted to gambling? <laughs> I just like to bet money so oh, I got a I got a message in discord never mind so um with that in mind as each of you place your bets um it does seem as stated that the minotaur seems to be the favorite of this fight and just as you have an inkling um, of a suspicion there for Modar. Um, this is actually why I am putting everyone in the turn order in case there is some sort of uh, mischief that you'd like to get away with. With most of you, the turns, if not being, you know, probably just pass or whatnot, or if you don't, then I can just remove you. But no, I'm maybe... I'm not looking to get I'm not looking to get away with things. I'm looking to see if someone else is doing it. I have no intention of, uh, oh, yes. you know, but maybe... Modar, Modar has no intention of doing this unless he sees someone else doing it, exactly. and then I'll take action. But, no, I'm not looking That's to what I was. Like, it. Like, okay. what if you notice something, essentially, mm -hmm. during the, the fight? If I, yeah, you know, if I notice something, then I, yeah. That's, but I am kind of, I'm watching the fight, but I'm also trying to survey the crowd and see if I notice anything. Miss, yeah, uh, anything we'll else We'll see that a uh, few... Uh, people have uh, focused their attention. Um, the centaur that approached Alencia, the champion, seems to be focused on the fight. And uh, j not so much like an intimidation, but just peering, watching each of the fights quite intently, learning. He's paying attention to what the other fighters are doing. Exactly. So, um, of course, at the top of the turn order, as we begin uh, round three of the brawl, uh, we will have uh, Togo. So, Togo, if you wish to do anything uh, during this uh, combat session, let me know. Not right now, but I will let you know if it comes up in the turn, or if we restart a turn order and I uh, want to do something.
He's but for now, I'm already? content to watch. Okay, Modar, are you doing the same? Uh, yes, yeah, I'm not doing. I'm not doing anything. All right. Uh, no entrance and and uh, Zanashi, just still hanging out yourself. Yeah, I'm just observing, looking um, over this All right. opponent of Valencius. Well, with each of you just observing. Uh, Go ahead and all three of you roll me a perception check, and then we will move to Alencia's turn. Okay, Alencia, the fight has begun. What do you do? One star, I just got dinner. Nervous eating. <laughs> Yeah, must be nervous. Um, so with a held action, what are my limits? Can I move and attack with it? Can I potentially, like, move out of the way at the last second? Uh, so, I mean, I, I guess it depends on, uh, so if you're looking to hold your action to, like, dodge, wouldn't you just take the dodge action? Right. But, like, what if I hold my action until he comes a certain distance and I move, like, in another direction? Uh, so more of, like, a feint. Yes. Yeah, you can do that. Okay, then I'll hold my action to circle around the arena as as he comes within 10 feet of me. Okay. Well, then as you uh, stand taking uh, a bit of a uh, defensive uh, yet uh, move, maneuverable uh, stance uh, being quite light on both your feet ready to go either way the Minotaur will indeed um, push the hoof into the dirt cranking up a bit and it does seem that your idea is exactly what you should be doing knowing that they seem to the Minotaur seem to head in a more of a straight line finding themselves in um in some of the lore that you know of uh, to be in labyrinth and mazes, they are not meant great for turning. So as he gets 10 feet away from you, he'll begin to lower his head. You'll see uh, the horns both coming down as he attempts to gore you. Can you give me a deck save at advantage? And you move out of the way, even taking just a brief moment of extra time uh, in attempt to make him bash into the wall itself. But as you maneuver dodging, he stops just a few inches short not hitting the wall, turning his head, looking at you, and then closing the gap, raising a fist. As each of you look around, you just see that everyone's attention seems to be quite uh, um, caught, captivated by this fight. It does seem that everyone is... Uh, Mainly licking their lips, anticipating some easy money coming their way as this Minotaur smashes into the wall, creating a bit of a divot, the horn chipping just a bit more as it moves on. No one seems to be showing any uh, intent on interfering. Valencia. 
as I see him uh, basically whiff his attack, she'll run sort of toward him, but to the side. And attack. Not with advantage, but yeah. 18 will hit. Alright, setting strike. That is a 10 on the con save. I'm pretty sure he's stunned. Pretty sure. As you uh, sink in with the blow and you just hear like a rib crack. And as it does, you'll just see him kind of lock into a position as he becomes paralyzed. Well, I More. guess because it's a, an actual different term, he's just actually stunned. <laughs> uh, that was it. Nice. Bonus action. And, uh... He's stunned at the end of my turn, right? Until the Until end the of... the end of your next turn, yes. My next turn, yes, okay. Then Floria blows. Okay. Alright, I'll... If it misses, uh, I'll let you know. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Because right now, I mean, you have advantage, so if you if you do miss, I'd be surprised. Uh, so that is another eight damage. Is that it? Yep. All right. Um, during, uh, I mean, the next turn, obviously, he's uh, stunned, but... With him not doing anything, others will just begin to yell, boo, in a, a bit of a disappointment. Ah, oh, he's throwing the fight! He's not even trying! Sansa, did he bet on himself? Ah, uh, no, he, that one seems to have hit a vital spot. Maybe she's quite more talented than each of you thought. Don't be such sore losers. A couple of tankards of ale and bits of uh, chicken legs and turkey legs, uh, or um, the fish will begin to just fly towards the minotaur. Do any of you wish to uh, jump in on this, or are you just going to take it in? <laughs> I just start cheering. Gah! Give it to him! Gah! Alright, well then with it uh moving back to Alencia's turn, what keep beating the shit out of it, dude. <laughs> yeah. After I nailed his ribs and stunning him, uh I've just been focusing on his hind legs. And then uh, I uh I run up his back and I sort of knee him in the back of the neck. And then, uh, hop off. All right, give me an acrobatics check. And this looks clean. As you run up the back, uh, pushing off the wall, running up knee to the back of the neck, and then uh, hitting him a couple more times as you somersault through the air, landing back down in almost your original positioning. And then... Uh, flawless. She will run... Right here. And uh, bonus action dodge. Got it. Let's 
So you'll see the Minotaur shake its head as it begins to uh, snarl, uh, snort at you a bit. Moving forward, uh, will then place its head down once more, attempting to strike you with its horns. This one, um, with the disadvantage, very, very good call with the first attack being a natural 20. And then the next one being a natural one. So with yeah. a uh, seven to hit, unfortunately for him, will just be straight into the wall itself. And he will take a bit of damage as a horn snaps off and pops. And as it falls to the ground, you'll see him kind of reach out towards it on his hands and his knees as it becomes your turn, Alencia. <coughs> Bless you. And just a roundhouse kick to the jaw. Finish him. Yeah, Modar's starting to look around to see who's really starting to sweat. Practically everybody. A lot of people are getting very upset with how this seems to be looking in its outcome. Um, a couple of uh, the humans down towards the front entrance seem to be quite pleased. The 15 hitting. And just as he clutches the horn, the broken horn from the sand, you see bits of the sand kind of trickle through the uh, gaps in a... Uh, his fingers as you roundhouse kick right to the jaw. You hear a pop as he then just quickly falls like a sack of potatoes into the dirt as it grows quite a bit quiet as you move away. Everyone very stunned at this. Practically, I would think everybody except for your uh, comrades, your uh, party that you've been traveling Ooh. with but as it grows a little bit too eerily quiet, then everyone begins to erupt in a cheer. I don't really react. I'm just kind of brushing my hands and feet off as I walk back up. Okay. And then with that, uh, Sansa will just yell out, whoa, -ho! wow. Well, whoever's placed a bet on that one, well, don't count yourself so lucky next time. We'll know her tricks for then. I'll just walk back to the table. So what I will do is uh, I will let you know each what your uh, income is. As the fourth uh, round begins to set up. And then we will uh, take a break. <laughs> All right, so the income is going to be our money back plus, or are you just going to tell us what we get? Uh, oh, I, I usually just tell you the profit, but I'll, I'll just give everyone the total to make it easy. Um, but, okay. well, this... Profit's fine. Okay, uh, this yeah, round... Uh, the only thing to point out is that mm -hmm. the contendent to be called is uh, Gabo from the Green Ear Tribe and Odair Centaur of the Shadow Lion Tribe. Of course, Gabo doesn't show. The round is counted as a scratch as the Centaur heads to the next round. Then for round five will be uh, Wallen Longlight, the Human of the Dead Bones, and Gurok of the Skull Clan Tribe. So we will go ahead and just take a small break as you guys uh, begin to observe the next round. 
And the only other announcement being that there being one more round remaining for the day, the contestants will be back tomorrow to finish the second day of the uh, brawl. The last round being, of course, Zanashi um, versus Karnak, Rigvigir, Minotaur, No Tribe Affiliated. But we'll go ahead and then take a break and then make our way through this little quick fight before Zanashi enters uh, the ring and begins to take on a one-on-one -on -one battle. All right. Oh, be right back. And stay tuned. See you shortly.
All right, and we're back. So, with the next round getting ready to begin, uh, the bets will begin to be collected. If you wish to bet, and just let me know, uh, however you would like to, and then move on through the fight. I ain't betting on people I don't know. Uh, roll me a history check, Zanashi, at advantage. Oh, yeah, this is one that's from my tribe. I forgot about that. Indeed, when uh, the name of the Skull Clan tribe rings out, it does catch your ear, your old tribe. Do I know how skilled he is? Unfortunately, the name doesn't ring a bell, but from giving him like a quick once over, he definitely seems to be uh, quite a formidable individual. This human is, I mean, nothing to, you know, necessarily not be worried of, but this doesn't seem like a good situation for him. Yeah. Mm. Old boyfriend Zanashi? Sure. If you say so. No, I was asking. You look like you recognized him. So now she never had a boyfriend. I have man friends. I suppose you're a man friend and Togo's a man friend, but not him. Last call for bets. Well, then begin as the orc wastes no time rushing forward. You see the muscles begin to bulge as he goes into a bit of a rage, uh, recognizing this as almost the same type of um, muscle, muscle integrity uh, changes that Zanashi has, is, uh, has when going into a rage as well and then striking the human in the face uh, twice with the fist. Why do these guys get the easy fights, man? Me and Lindsay got to fight Minotaurs. And as these both these punches connect, you can see that uh, the jaw is immediately broken as this human begins to stagger. A very half-hearted... Uh, punch goes towards the orc, missing the second one landing, but dealing m like barely any damage as the orc just laughs and then open hands him, uh, slaps from the back of the hand into the face, into the already broken jaw. And as this human spirals down, um, doing three full rotations before hitting the dirt and below, you just see this pool of blood emitting from the mouth as the orc lets out a war cry in victory. Next up uh, is Zanashi. I step into the entrance and I toss my robe off. And underneath my robe, all you everybody sees is a naked orc.
And as each of you look, you'll notice that she doesn't look entirely the same. Almost a, a bit darker in her complexion. It doesn't seem to be something that is the skin itself, but something resting upon it. Oh, I'm so glad you haven't put the mission tracker up yet. I was just practicing, I guess. And um, with that, Modar, as you look over towards where Alencia uh, or Zanashi was sitting, you'll notice that there is a pretty big like puddle there. All this fighting was getting me a, wet. A puddle, like, does it a paint, oil, okay. Uh, paint, oil, what does it look like? It's definitely a bit dark. It doesn't look like water. Uh, the nearest thing you can think of is uh, is oil. But it's not like a, like a paint by the looks of it. Nope. I walk up to the uh, edge of the thing for this one. Okay, if you wish to place your bets, do it now. The fight will begin in a few moments' time. I feel like this is paybacks for killing your brother. <laughs> I actually I look forgot at about that. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> I walk up to the edge and yell out to Zanashi to uh, go carve me out a steak for you, will you? And use a bardic inspiration. Is that In a spell? Nope. I'm just being in so inspiring with my uh, words that you do better. Oh, okay, cool. Basically, he like does a uh, WWE or yeah WWE uh, entrance for you. <laughs> Basically, getting y'all hyped up. Yeah. Good call there, bud. <laughs> I actually didn't think about that during uh, Alencia's fight, but otherwise I would have given mm -hmm. you at least one, too. Mm -hmm. But as Togo makes his way forward, uh, you'll see him with a, like a tankard in one hand, full of ale, quite enjoying himself with a uh, chicken leg in the other. And as he... Uh, Shouts a few words towards you. You'll just see a few of the centaurs on either side of you, Togo. Just look over towards you, and one will just pipe up. Mm. You know that one? Good fighter. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the same party as that drow, and both of them are, I'd say, are about the same. Or the elf. Lady, 100 coin on orc. Thanks, little one. That's all need be said. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, then with that, um, will the three of you, uh, Modar, Togo, and Alencia, will each of you give me a perception check um, as it, we move to the Minotaur's turn? My perception is lower than my passive. Are you going to use my passive? Mm-hmm. Okay. So as each of you look around, um, no one really seems too interested in this bout. Only the ones uh, immediately surrounding the ring and a couple of the orcs. Um, the only thing that really catches anyone's attention is that the orcs at the uh, bottom left of the tables uh, the southwestern end seems to uh, be chatting amongst themselves while furiously pointing over towards the ring but 
bottom left is in behind me from the uh, arena. Okay, got it. That one right there. So with this, uh, uh, the horns coming down towards you, Zanashi, it will be a 12 to hit, which misses as it batters into the wall. And as it does, you'll just see it shake its head. It doesn't seem to have any effect on the um, Minotaur at all. But as you look towards where the head hit the wall, you just see this double size of like a hole, like double the size of the head. <laughs> You lucky it miss. You're lucky I'm not going to get angry. And I am going to proceed to punch this uh, Minotaur two times. All right. Twenty-one hits. Five. I think they're all gonna be five, but <laughs> I know all the hits that are his. It'd be seven if I was actually doing seventeen a hits. Rage, but I'm gonna save it. But they could be more than five if I crit. True. And it would actually be fifteen if I crit. As you sink in a couple of hits, this one just laughs as it barely seems to have phased him. <laughs> that all you got? As he will... And I haven't ended my turn yet, have I? Uh, no, I was just going to say as he begins to like flex on you. Okay, you see my muscles start to bulge. I am going to rage. And as you do, a cheer begins to uh, erupt from the crowd as um, it begins to draw more and more attention to the fight. Is that it? That is it. So as this fight is going on, the Minotaur will then begin to take a couple swings at you, uh, Zanashi. The uh, the rest of you, uh, Alencia and Togo, from across the way, you see these uh, three orcs beginning to make their way up behind Togo. I'm just going to stand up cautiously and circle around. I'm going to... Uh... I'm going to kind of keep looking and kind of look into my hand and send message to Togo. Behind you, Togo. Yes, don't forget you guys are, like, are in the turn order, but I'm just skipping over your guys's uh, to give you like the information. So, uh, Do I know, have like... room to make my way in front of the centaur to my left? Uh, gonna... But just so you guys know, like there is still like restriction on like movement and like uh, spells or you know things of that manner being cast if needed. Yeah, um, I move forty. Just just for the record, so everyone understands. Uh, but uh, Togo, you can move because you were before the Minotaur, um, and then the Minotaur will take two swings at Zanashi. Zanashi, the first one uh, is a ten. The second one is a twenty-seven. 27 hits. And you will take 6 damage in total, so halved is 3. <laughs> Weak. <laughs> that way you think. And then he'll just begin to like put his head forward, presenting himself for a uh, opportunity attack as he begins to back up and begin to charge. So he goes to back up. How tall is this guy? About eight, uh, eight and a half foot. I'm going to lean in and what's he wearing? He's actually just got a linen cloth on covering the bottoms. Mm, but he is a damn half a damn horse. 
yeah, I'm just going to lean in and just swing at him, I guess. All right. And I'm assuming we'll... I'm assuming I'll get both attacks, or do I? On an opportunity attack. No. Not on an opportunity attack. Um, but it does become your turn. Um, Alencia moving around. Uh, it doesn't seem that you've uh, caught anyone's attention. Uh, Togo, however, um, the centaur over to your right now will. Um, look over towards you and uh, say, "What wrong, little one?" Hmm. Oh, I was just readjusting. Hmm. And I'll look over to. Uh, do I see a waiter somewhere around here? Um, you see quite or a, a few. barmaid. Uh, one is I'll, actually right behind you. I will turn around and say, "A drink for me and my friend here." Uh, as he like reaches out and then he will just like pick you up holding you in one of his arms <laughs> if you allow it um, but if not then oh yeah I'll allow it okay I'm just gonna make sure that he's not like intending to throw Togo or anything no, wouldn't be the first time It's <laughs> right. it seems <laughs> that uh this one is quite taken with them. Uh, the conversation uh, seems to just be nice and lighthearted. The uh, orcs down below, though, seem to have their eyes directly on him. On Togo, that is. Uh, Zanashi, it's your turn. Okay. The way I've got this figured out. Okay, you said he's eight and a half foot tall. Mm hmm. I can jump. While raging, 10 foot off the ground, if I have 10 foot of movement. So I'm going to run and attempt to jump on his head and then proceed to punch him, punch him in his damn head. Okay, uh, give me an athletics check. You do have advantage because of raging. Oh, yeah. Whew, and you needed it. As he had a 19 himself, uh, so he would have meant to beat you for the defense. But as you jump up, you feel him shaking quite a bit. You're able to, like, you feel your right arm whip back before you're able to, like, Pull it back in front of you, grabbing onto the horn uh, and being uh, wrapping your legs around uh, the head quite uh, just to be quite secured, leaving your left arm free. And I'm going to proceed to punch this motherfucker. No Hurricane Rama? <laughs> um... I'm going to use RKO, my <laughs> inspiration here. Okay. So, what is it, D6? Uh, yeah, I think it's a little D6 for Togo. Uh, let me double check. I think it's a D6. No, it's a D8. It's a D8. Oh, well, I mean, I'm pretty sure 6 is going to hit with my 13. Yeah, that'll be plenty. Yeah, I don't need the 8. <laughs> right, come in with the left hand. Bah! Right into the side of the head. And with your weight and pulling, uh, with just like the momentum, you hear a bit of a crack from the horn as well that you're holding on to. All right. And I am going to swing again. Oh, and this is, you got to add plus two extra damage to those now since I am raging. So it's seven damage on each of us. Yep. Uh, thank you for the reminder. I didn't do it on the first one, uh, but I, I added it onto the second one for you, for both. Okay. I'm going to move my token down just so I can see his health bar. Okay. Okay. 
And uh, hmm, I guess uh, that's it. You can still see that, right? Your health bar? Yeah. All right. Just so you guys can see how this is going. Right now, definitely uh, favoring uh, Zanashi from the looks of it, as this uh, Minotaur finds himself at quite a uh, odd position when it becomes his turn. The rest of you um, seeing those orcs not wanting to seem to get much closer, but their eyes have not peeled away from Togo. Togo, when the barmaid returns, uh, Sanzer will actually hand you uh, two uh, tankards of ale uh, and then say, well, there you go. That will be uh, five silver for the both. I will give her seven. And just as uh, you hand over the silver, you hear a bit of a reaction from the crowd as the Minotaur... Uh, swings uh, quite awkwardly towards Zanashi. Swinging wildly into the air. Uh, the first one, a 13 to hit. Yes. And then will be um, a 19 to hit. Yeah. Six damage. As the first one swinging wildly oh. over <coughs> your head, and then the second one connecting in. Pretty weak for a big guy. Get off! It begins just shaking a bit, trying to like buck you uh, from holding on. And, uh,. I'm going to swing some more. Seven. Mm hmm. Seven more. As I punch towards his eyes when I do, you know, when I'm punching too, you know, whether I'm hitting his eyes or not, that's another thing. But that's pretty much where I'm aiming for is like hitting him in the damn eyes. Yeah, and you do. You connect quite solidly to both the eyes. As you, uh, uh, both the punches land, you'll note that the eyes are becoming a bit swollen. One almost seems a bit shut. You might want to give in. That's it for my turn. From the crowd, I'll cheer. Get him by the horn! Get him by the horn! And give her another uh, inspiration die. And as you shout around, uh, Togo, as you give a little bit of a glance uh, to your left and right side, you'll see that the orcs have moved in a bit more. All of their attentions uh, seem to be focused on you. The centaur will give a little bit of a look back and forth and say, These are your friends. I've never met them before in my life. How do you do? Well. With that, uh, just real quick, uh, Togo, Alencia, is there anything you wish to do when seeing this? Yep, yeah, I'll just subtly move closer as well. I just tell my uh, centaur friend that uh no I don't know him and I'm just holding an action for something dangerous um yeah I'm going to no I'm not doing anything yet at this moment Togo knows what's going on I'm good if you all not know my friend, then you all go sit down. The centaur says as he looks towards each of the orcs. 
this is when the Minotaur will then try to uh, maneuver about taking a couple steps forward before then lowering its head and running straight towards the wall. Eighteen to hit. A hit. And this one will definitely hurt a bit as it punctures you with its horns, piercing you as it batters you as well into the wall. You will take a total of thirty-nine damage. Um, halved being what is that? Nineteen. Uh, I believe so. Sounds right. And then I will need a uh, strength saving throw from you, please. Oh, as the horns pierce into you and he backs away... Uh, you will just fall to the ground. You find yourself prone. What's the save on that? 16. Damn. And as this happens, the crowd reaction goes, Oh! As Sanzer, uh, announces out that one's going to sting in the morning what is she going to do next at this point each of the orcs looking at you and the centaur uh, friend that you just made Togo will say we know her we find as they begin to uh, walk away Well, that was both weird and kind of creepy and annoying at the same time. Shall we have another drink? Hmm. They all scared. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, Sasha. I am going to. Move around this large minotaur a little bit. And then I'm going to jump up on its back, right behind its head. If I need to make a roll, I can make a roll. Uh, yeah, either in athletics or in acrobatics. Ooh, perfect. And then I am going to grab both of the horns. And I'm going to proceed to... Pull them apart as my action this round. I'm going to try to break his fucking horns. <laughs> okay. Give me a... Uh, oh, shit. Uh, just a strength check um, at advantage. And I'm going to add my inspiration to that 20. For 28. Ooh, hot damn. Uh, so as you uh, lunge onto like the back, jumping around, maneuvering him, as he, he'll like try to grab you with one of his hands to prevent you, uh, like an attempt to like a grapple, but you maneuver around quite quickly and agilely. You jump onto the back, grabbing the head, placing your feet right on like the top of his shoulders, clutching the horns and beginning to pull back. The one that was cracked before snaps off quickly and as you kind of lose your footing a bit, you hear another crack of the other horn. You don't fall off, but you're still holding on. The the second horn not coming off yet. Okay, and I'm positioning myself, so if he tries to run into a wall again, I'm not between the horn and the wall. 
but I am wrapping my legs the best I can around him and uh, holding on to that horn. And I still have the other horn in my hand. Other hand. As you rip it out, uh, you'll notice that there's a bit of a trickle of blood running down your hand and your wrist. As you look towards the horn, you see that there is just a decent amount of blood pouring out of the horn. You look back over towards the broken one, and it is like you severed an artery. You see uh, him drop down to one knee um, before raising back up in a uh, yell of pain shaking his head around trying to get you off so that's what I oh uh it's not his turn this uh i'm making sure that's the end of zanashi's turn that is going to be the end of my turn because i don't think i can do anything else Okay, well, a hell of a turn it was. You can see that when he broke the horn, it seemed to have a tremendous amount of damage done to it. Unless, uh, bonus action, you know, since I'm technically carrying, like, a... I mean, I don't know if you'd consider a horn a finesse weapon. <laughs> or whatever it is. Light weapon. That would be an improvised weapon at best. Yeah, I think with okay. it falling under an improvised weapon... It might be a uh, position where you, you may feel like it's on the fence of breaking the rule. Minotaur. Um, he is able to use his horns against me. I don't see any reason. I mean, this is my thought process. Uh, they're natural as, with as them, my though. Work. Yeah. Well, it's natural with me now. I claim <laughs> that motherfucker. Well, when it's my turn, you can bet your ass I'm about to break whatever rules they think they might have. I'll argue that one with them. It'd be just like me breaking his fucking arm off and beating his ass with it. <laughs> okay, that's it of my turn. <laughs> All right, well, this one, he will attempt to do the same thing, but with only having uh, one horn and you being positioned on the back, this is more of an attempt to jar you off than anything else. Uh, can you give me a uh, opposed athletics check, please? Ooh, Damn, I should have yeah. saved my inspiration for that one. So as he whips his head forward real quick and then back, you lose the grip as he flings you down behind him. You are uh, just brought down to um, a, like, need position, quickly standing as you meet um, or see two attacks coming your way. Okay. A 19 and a 21 to hit. They hit. So a total of uh, 12 damage, so halved is just uh, 6. Before your turn, Zanashi, um, the others, as you see the orcs back away, still holding your positions, and now mainly focus on the show. I yell out, Now take the other one! Give him back to him! For a, uh, another inspiration die. But besides that, that's it. All right, go ahead, Zanashi. Okay, well, it's my turn. I am going to... Uh, hmm. Fuck it. I'm jumping back up on this motherfucker, and I'm going to try... No, I ain't jumping up on him. I'm pissed now. I'm going to punch him. With one of my fists, and I'm going to bring the other other hand that's got that horn in it, and I'm trying to jab him right in his damn face. Okay. Twenty six hits. That is a uh, hold on. Give me a second. Yeah, 
want to make sure I didn't get the 19. No, nope, that's something else I'm thinking of. All right. So, yeah, seven points of damage is there. Mm -hmm. And how do you want me to roll for the horn? Well, with an improvised weapon, I don't believe that you have, uh, like, proficiencies with it. So, I think it's just a flat d20. Uh, well, for the for the roll, you still get your plus to your strength or whatever. Is I wasn't sure if it added that or not. So that's what you I was just, getting ready to you check. You don't. I mean, the rules as written, in my understanding, are you don't get your proficiency bonus, but you should still get your your strength or your dex bonus. I may be wrong, but I thought that's how it worked. Okay, so 23 to hit. Well, even without the mod, a 19 is good. And what am I rolling for damage? Uh, 1d4 plus your strength mod. 7 points of damage plus 2, 9. Nice. Here, have your horn back, big guy. As I stick it into his face somewhere. And as the thought, as uh, mentioned, crosses your mind of uh, this may be a bit of cheating, the crowd reaction with another gasp as you stab him in the face with his own horn, uh, but nothing else is said. Everyone more just enjoying it. And uh, with that, I am going to move. Right there. All right. Well, then with it becoming the Minotaur's turn. We'll repeat the same process as he swings wild at wildly at you and attempts to punch once more. The first one is a 27 to hit, and followed up by a 16. And they both hit. So 12 damage in total going to towards you, uh, halved for six. As he is looking really rough, the wound from the horn that you punctured him with dripping with blood as the rest of the blood from the broken horn atop the head is spewing a bit. Dripping over him, you can see him staggering, barely even able to stand. It's your turn. I'm going to uh, continue to punch him. Seven. And, oh, yeah. Awesome. That's going to be 15 points of damage. It should be, because it should be the 5 extra, and then plus my brutal critical. Mm -hmm. So how does this look as you knock him out? You give him uh, once with the first attack, staggering a bit more. This next blow landing perfectly. That second blow... As I hit him with the first one, I hit him with my left. Hit him to the eye in an upward swing because he's taller. And his chin comes up even a little higher. And my left, second one's an uppercut right to the dam where the throat meets uh, his jawbone underneath there. And as you deliver the final blow, knocking him out, the rest of the crowd goes wild. Uh, you also hear a mixture of cheer and a bit of moaning as you knock out the Minotaur. Sanzer will yell out, Well, seems that we have a number, another second tier contender amongst our ranks. Will they be able to make it forth through the next day of the brawl? Well... Come back tomorrow and place your bets and find out. 
I take that one horn that I'd broken off, I pull it out of his face or wherever I'd stuck it, and uh, start drinking the blood off of or licking the blood off of the horn as I carry the horn with me as a trophy. Put my robe back on. Uh, come out of my rage and I'm limping, of course. I'm a little hurt. Just just saying, um, I did give you uh like uh just for like a little peak kind of thing, I did give you disadvantage on the first few, uh being oiled up, but uh with you kinda jumping on him and then doing all that, I felt like it would kinda rub off a bit. Okay. I had to, sh you know, make sure my sexy body was nice and shiny. Sanashi, please don't take offense to this, but that was the ugliest fight I have ever seen. Kind of give uh, Alessia a dirty look. That's how we fight where I come from. You did amazing. He's lucky I didn't do more. Try to stay a little modest. So with that, um, Zanashi, as you make your return, you'll see uh, sacks of coin being placed down in front of Modar or Lincia. And as you look over, you see Togo being carried, a nice uh, coin purse being handed to him as well. And then also uh, the centaurs that he seems to have made friends with. Which at this point, they are now like hoisting you in the air quite uh, cheerful with you there, Togo. Ah, <laughs> uh, you win us lots of coin. Ha <laughs> ha, yes. Ah, uh, what a fight, too. Whew. Well, Togo, looks like you're making lots of friends today. Uh, yeah, I don't... Uh... I don't know who the uh, orcs were, but... Wait, you want down now? Go back to friends? Yeah, I probably should rejoin them, but uh, I'll look at a, look for a barmaid or someone around me and order another round of drinks for him and anyone who he's kind of hanging out with. Well, you, you know, uh, me friends with Champion. Because he oh, sets you really? back down. And... With that, he'll look uh, quite, um, like, proud of that as he gives you a bit of a smile and a nod. Mm -hmm. Ha, I saw him fight earlier today. That was uh, <laughs> impressive, to say the least. Oh, that, that nothing. Exactly. That's what's so impressive about it. He was just like, huh. Walked all over him. I appreciate people who can just, uh, uh, I don't know, deal with people without an effort. Mm. Me surprised he got hit, but me go spend coin. Thanks, little one. Oh, wave and I guess I will return to my uh, comrades. Where's Zanashi at? Sitting her ass down in a chair. Feeling pretty rough. But happy. Well, Zanashi, uh, think you'll be ready for tomorrow? I'm not so sure I'm going to be continuing in this arena. I've fought too much recently. I'm feeling like I need to rest. 
I may just stay in my room for the next few days. Hmm. Just so you know, a uh, group of orcs noticed you in the arena and came up and was uh, getting awfully close to me with the uh, centaur over there. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You point them out to me? I think that the, uh, I am not really concerned, but I didn't know if they were friends of yours or acquaintances, but. Jeez, how many old boyfriends do you have around here, Zanashi? You keep talking about boyfriends, Modar, and I'm going to make you my boyfriend. <laughs> As you say that, Sanashi, you'll feel a hand c come on, um, place their hand on your shoulder, patting you a bit. Well, that was well, uh, well fought, hey, both of you. Well, as she looks over towards Togo and uh, Modar, uh, the name sounds are nice to nice to make your acquaintance, but uh, I will need both of you to uh, both pull a uh, stone from this pouch for tomorrow's fights. Unfortunately, I have decided to withdraw from the fighting. I do not wish to have to fight my friend, Alicia. I want to put my support behind her. Alicia looks a bit surprised. Well, nonetheless, I will still need you to draw a stone so we can set up the next rounds. You're more than able to withdraw, of course. There's no penalty. You will forfeit any um, profit being able to be gained from placements amongst the arena. But, of course, if it's too rough, then you may go amongst your way. Oh, at what place do they start to gain profit? In third place Top and three. up. Third place wins 10 gold. Second will win 50. And first place will bring home 100 gold pieces. You said your name was Sanzor, right? That is uh, correct. The owner of this fine <sighs> establishment. It is a pleasure to meet you. My name's Togo. Could I get you a drink here sometime? Either when we're in here tomorrow for the uh, uh, next rounds of fights. Well, you can get me a drink now. Uh, the business is concluded. It'll be nice to kick back a couple of tankards of ale. Ha <laughs> ha, wonderful. I'd love to get you a drink. What about you guys? Are you guys going to... Hang out here or relax for a little bit back at the rooms. I have that order ready for me when I make my way back. Uh, first, each of you will need to uh, draw the stones. I'll draw them. I'll draw one, too. So, uh, Zanashi, roll me a d4. And then, Alencia, roll me a d3. Well, looky there. Both of you would have uh, been facing in the next round tomorrow anyways. Lucky for you, seems that your friend will be giving you a bit of a breather until the next day. Um, well, both of you quickly come with me. No need for the others to draw now. We know the results. Where are we going? To the arena for her to make the announcement. Uh, I assume she said, like, follow her into the arena. Yep. Both of you come down, and she'll motion for you to stand on uh, her right side, just exactly where you guys are. And then we'll say, well, 
on the just the first two draws, four and three were both pulled, which will only leave one and two, which means tomorrow's fights will be the champion versus the orc. And with this half orc pulling out of the competition, meaning this elf going forth. And with that, we'll bring you one round of fights tomorrow at noon, next day, then the final bout. That concludes the day's brawls. Everyone enjoy some drinks, food, and more wine. Spend the coin you've just won. Make some friends. Enjoy yourselves. And then she will make her way out, and then so, are, so will the others. Now, at this point, I will open it up the floor to each of you for what you would like to do and in a few moments time you will see uh, um, Sanzer giving you just like a, a one moment before she makes her way over what are y'all's you all's plans for the rest of the day I'm gonna go find me a tub and uh, somewhere to get a rub down Sounds like a good plan. After you're done with that, please allow me to bandage you up. Well, I think I'm just going to head back to the room and do some reading. I found some interesting books. We'll see what else I might be able to find out. I start walking around the table. Get over by Modar. I kick my robe off and sit on his lap. <laughs> <laughs> so, big guy, you've been talking a lot about my boyfriends. How about that rubdown? Uh, I just figured there was a reason you went, ran away from uh, these lands. Didn't know if maybe they were starting to come back and chase you down. Uh, they don't want any of this. Uh, by the way, they were circling Togo. I seem to disagree with that. <laughs> Togo, I believe so. I was, I was thinking, I was like, Motor would probably sound a bit more squished. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but as you say that, uh, Zanashi, can you give me a performance check? I haven't used my last inspiration, have I? I don't think so. I don't think so, no. I was, I was thinking, but no, I don't. Um, 17. Can you give me your con save there, Modar? Uh, con save or inside? Con, oh, con for... Oh, I think I know where this is going. Save is terrible. Please tell me it's true. Uh, Modar, you can't see oh, why no, anyone okay. would want would want that. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Oh, there you go. oh <laughs> never mind. That was a charisma. Yeah, that you was can a see charisma, why people yeah. would want that. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say because he failed to save, he got a boner. Well, shit, that should have been shit, that would have been a twenty-two if I was I'm like, damn it, I should have been paying attention. I just looked over and saw the C and clicked on it. Ah, um, but I do want to. Uh, well, are you sure that uh, you're not running from some something or someone over there? Well, of course not. As I stand up and I put my robe back on and go back to my seat. And I definitely do want to insight that. I forget. I gotta stop double clicking. Damn it! Used to fantasy ground. That's fine. Your first one was higher, yeah. anyways. Um. 
Well, Zanashi? I feel like a, uh, a, a little bit of a deception check is worthy there. Inside that. He did a 24. Damn. Yeah. <laughs> so, while still being fairly impressed with your uh, sex dance you just pulled off there, um, you, Modar, you do uh, realize, or uh, do pick up that, well, maybe not a significant other in a way, but there is um, some sort of tie, but... As she had, as as Zanashi had already mentioned, um, her old tribe. She is running from something. No. No. Okay. All right. Well then, Zanashi, I'm sure everything will work itself out eventually. Well, you all know where to find me if you need me. And, uh, yeah, Modo's gonna pick up his stuff and start to head back to the room to study the books that he's received for the rest of the day. And I am going to go find a, uh, you know, not necessarily a bathhouse, but a place that would have uh, a place to wash, but also to receive a good rub down massage. Well, this would be the place for it as you begin to inquire whereabouts to go. Uh, baths upstairs in each of the rooms. Um, when like finding this out, you'll notice that each of the fighters um, that had participated, even the ones that were uh, now regaining consciousness a bit of time later, are all staying here. That's what I'm going to go do, then. I'm going to go upstairs. Okay. It'll be uh, one gold for the room. And you'll be uh, told that, well, uh, this will come for uh, the room for the evening, a nice hot bath, and a, um, well, a person of your choosing from the staff to come up and give you any assistance that you may need. Um, massages, anything of that sort, of course. Well, it's my selections from, I mean, uh, can I look at them now or are you going to describe them to me? She gestures towards each of the barmaids. You can see most of them are fair. No one of uh, too particular of attractiveness. But None that are how uh, less are less are racist. All all of them are humans. I found the smallest one. Okay. That's what I choose. All right. What are the rest of you doing? I'm gonna try to buy. Uh, was it Sandor? Sanders. Sanzor. Sans Sansor. Sanders hey, where uh, we get uh, fried chicken. That's right. I thought that was the colonel. Anyways, uh, Sansor is a uh, drink or two and chat with them at the bar. Oh, I was going to move her back over towards you. Oh, that works <laughs> if she, at a table. So, after... Uh the conversation with you, Zanashi. She'll uh, gesture over towards the stairs um, that are just over here. And as she gestures over towards them, uh, she'll let you know that your uh, room is the second on the left down the hall. But then uh, pulls up a uh, like kind of resting her arms on the table and grabbing the tankard that you have ready for her, Togo. 
Ah, well. Looking forward to a, another another days of work. <laughs> I can hear you cheering out there. Uh, just know that's quite aware of your tricks. I didn't think it would be anything untoward. It's nothing uh, directly interfering. Just uh, bolstering someone's uh, aptitude for the fight, which everybody wants a good fight. Well, when the crowd is on your side, it does seem to be, provide a bit more of a uh, inspiration, if you will. It seems to pull something from within out that you didn't know was there. But, <clears throat> well, she takes a sip of the of the ale. I can uh, refrain from that if you if it's uh, not necessarily wanted in the fight, but. Oh. Not that it's not necessarily wanted. I just wish that I would have known uh, about it a bit beforehand. <laughs> My apologies. This way I could have made some coin myself. Well, uh... Oh, wait, no. She doesn't fight anyone besides the champion. I was going to say, my friend Alencio is going to be uh, doing quite well in the fights, but she only has one more fight, and if I'm being honest... I don't know how much I'm going to bet on her against the champion. Isn't that her right there? I, th I thought they all left. No one's, uh, no Modo, one's moved tokens. Mo uh, I figured this was important. Sorry. If I figured... <laughs> A Modar was, yeah, no, Modar probably has left by this point. Okay, so if you guys now. have all, de if whoever's <laughs> departed, you can just move your tokens out. That's right. Sorry. She, she has nowhere else to be, so she's just kind of sitting here. Uh oh. <laughs> then I definitely don't say that in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> Alencia, the next time uh, you roll an attack roll, roll a d8 to de inspire yourself. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, of course. Uh, uh, well, uh, next time I'm here, I'll make sure to uh, point out who I'm uh, rooting for. Well. My bets were going to be on that uh, orcish friend of yours. It seemed that she was able to be quite formidable. However, I think I will take your friend here as my bet, seeing that she will make it into the finals by default. Regardless of the outcome, win or lose, I only stand to, to gain. I think after her breakthrough fight and... Then uh, getting a buy for the second one, it should uh, increase the interest in the uh, final fight for sure. Uh, I think that it may grow some more anticipation, but however, people here forget quickly, which may prove to be a bit more gain for our profits. Nonetheless, I'm sure you didn't come or uh, pull me this way to just speak of the... The fight's here. You can True. see the intent a, in your eye. I had a couple questions for you. How well do you know the uh, patrons of your bar normally? Well, other than a lot of you, I'd say fairly well. Each return that nearly every month. Group of uh, orcs in the far corner, the one that was behind me during my uh, friend Zanashi's fight. Who are they? She'll look over. Ah, those are some from the, the Skull Clan tribe. Okay. Fairly regular? Ah, wouldn't say fairly regular, but they always show up for the brawl. Okay. Ruthless bunch from what I've heard, but within the walls they seem to be quite tame. <laughs> Thank you. Also, would you happen to know if I were to try and get a boat of some ki kind, chartering a boat out, who, where would I go for that? Well, that would be me, of course. <laughs> you see, I uh, seem to have a nice foothold in what the people... I guess a nice, nice way to put it is, is what they, they all wish 
in a more legal format. But uh, with these with these brawls, I was able to buy other businesses, spend the coin, grew into some bits of trade. Very uh, entrepreneuring of you. Very impressive. Uh, we were looking to charter some kind of boater ship, and uh, of course, after the uh, fights in a couple days for everybody to rest up afterwards, but uh, going to an island south. Uh, what is it, Alencia? The, the veil? The celestial veil, I think it's you called? You all are fucking crazy. <laughs> Nobody goes there anymore. Why is that? Well, ever since that uh, purple beam fell from the sky, then... Uh, ships, well, they they stay away from there. Just forget about that place. You'll you'll not want to go. Hmm. Beam from fell from the sky relatively recently. Like a purple beam Aye. shooting across the sky. Aye, indeed. Huh. We saw, saw that it. while we were traveling south. Yeah. Ah. We only uh, saw. Uh, a couple, they just seem to go quite far away, but this one, <laughs> we thought it was coming right for the city. Huh. What happened? Well, it seemed to have fell uh, right upon the Celestial Vale Island, and when people have gone there to figure it out, well, <laughs> they don't come back. Um, nonetheless, we've learned to just stay away from there. Hmm. Not to mention well, that's problematic. The, not to mention the the blue dragon that uh, protects the straits. It's uh, let's just say uh, a bit more profitable to go around the long way, if trying to travel. <laughs> but that place, consider it dead. Dead. Uh, like no, dead go zone. hard, hard dead. Yes. All right. Well, that is a bit more than mildly inconvenient, actually. <laughs> hmm. We were uh, being uh, hired to go out there and check out some rumors on the island, but that was a couple months ago. You said it happened just after the large purple beam shot from the sky, right? That no one else came back from the island before everything was fine, correct? I wouldn't call it fine, but... There were, uh, well... Survivors. People that could go there to make quite a hefty amount of coin, if that's, that's what they were looking for, but... At the cost of some of the crew, of course. Would you happen to know any groups of these people? Maybe we can talk to them and see if we can get information on what we were looking for. In what regards? Uh, we were looking for a, uh a vessel of some sort that may be on the island. It's, we've been looking around. There's a patron we have up north that has an interest in boats that are in places where they do not belong. Uh, we found well, some in the midst of ancient caves and things like that, and there was rumor of one down there. As far as I know, that there is a cove, but oh, good luck getting in. Water's quite shallow. No boat can make their way in. But plenty of unplaced boats there, to say the least. Actually, I, and this will sound really weird, but I'm talking about a boat on the island itself, not in the water or just on the coast. So I'll kind of like lean in a little bit, placing the elbows on the table, and look at you and just say, Are you a bard? I am, actually. That's Why where you, you get your stories from. I knew you were making some shit up. I put 30 gold on the table and say, I have seen a boat that is inside a cavern that, to all accounts of me and my friend, who is a great scholar, has been inside that cavern for over at least 500 years. That cavern is about three miles from the ocean. Looks like it crashed there. How? We don't know. 
at this point, she'll look towards you, uh, Lincia, and say, You've seen this as well. I have, yes. We saw another one underground. Just what? North of Raisk? Well, I don't know what you think that that coin will get you, but if... You're looking I'm for saying a story. I would put all this money on this and bet whatever you wanted on this. <laughs> well, if you're I looking could... for a story, Bard, I've heard that the Celestial Vale was not a, always an island. Huh. Not always an island, you say? I, I heard that it once uh, was a column that stretched from all the way from the sea to the sky above the clouds. But... I mean, if you look at it now, you can see it from the shoreline. There's nothing but trees and grasslands. I don't, ah. I don't see that happening. True, but old stories like that oftentimes have something. And I, I, I'm not going to say that they used to be all the way up to the clouds, but uh, who knows? Maybe it's something that we're, uh, something similar to what we're looking for. But do you know any old sailors that maybe used to make that route and used to go out there that now don't because of the danger that we could maybe talk to to try and see if they've seen anything like what we're looking for? I've got a couple captains in mind and one that's no longer under my employment, but I've got another that's, well, he should be able to do the job. That would be absolutely wonderful if you could get, if you could tell me their name, I would love to speak with them. Captain Venga uh, Rolfador, you'll find him uh, down at the docks nearly all the time. Venga Rolfador? Yeah, I got you. I'll copy and paste the name. <laughs> and that's all the information. Oh, thank you very much for uh, that. I, I greatly appreciate it. And that's all the information that I'm going to try and get out of them. But I may buy them another drink or two until they have to get back to actually running their establishment and pay my tab and leave. Uh, well, as long as you're willing to stay, she's willing to get drinks. I'll buy three or four drinks. Let's say three drinks. Okay. More after whatever we had bought while of course. telling these tales. So, um, in total, uh, just mark off uh, two gold. Uh, I'll make it three and tip the uh, person who's serving us. Um, before, uh, like, paying uh, and departing, uh, sh she'll look to you, Alencia, and just say, uh, make sure that you do show up tomorrow, uh, just so you at least know what you're being uh, prepared for. I, I mean, I would just place my money on the champion myself, but, you know. What time is this fight tomorrow? Noon again, just like today? I. Wonderful. I imagine it will be a close fight. Ah, uh, probably not. Unless that uh, one from the school clan has a few tricks up his sleeve, then, well. Well, neither of us took those, have we? Well, it does seem that uh, not necessarily tricks, but uh, just a bit more talent. Maybe a bit more beneath than what just meets the eye. Well, then I'll be sure to fight even harder. Uh, Mode, are you going to go back to the room to read the book? Uh, can you give me a um, intelligence check? Just a straight intelligence. And Zanashi, you had just returned for, like, basically rest and relaxation. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, um, after, uh, 
you know, taking a bath and, you know, getting yourself a bit more situated. Uh, when the night is over for you, you will be able to add um, a uh, plus two to your con. So you will gain basically an additional two health on your uh, short rest. But I will just mark that down uh, for next time, unless everyone is good for the day and just wishes to uh, retire and get to sleep for the night. What time of day would it be? Uh, it's just late afternoon when the, the fights oh. finish up. It's not too late in the day. So like four or like seven? Oh, like four. Uh, I might try, try to make my way down to the docks too, uh, unless it's about time and we want to. Call it on a short rest okay. and then pick back up with the next week. Well, what we will leave off is with this. Um, Modar, as you're reading through on the pages that you have noted, um, some of the notes that you had taken in your journal, uh, writing it down on some of the ship uh, drawings and notes uh, from the pieces of parchment you've done as well, it clicks. Um, there are names in this uh, book that seem to follow some of the letters that you had found along the ship. You find uh, the name Tiz, Mogan, Zolos, Tempest and Savras. Is Mogan, Zolus, Tempest, and Savras? Mogan was the baddest motherfucker to ever lived. That's not a biased opinion, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the with... dragon that was that was destroyed. There's something like that, right? Maybe. <laughs> So, as you uh, mark that down, um, those uh, those encarved letters that seem to have, like, a bit of things missing now become clear. You then uh, begin to link this to uh, five, um, uh, five ambassadors that had left the Elysium dynasty on a ship. Then, when coming back, acquiring a magical component that gave it the capability to fly. And with that is where we'll call the session because we have a couple of things to discuss uh, behind the screen um, before we make any full announcements for playing next week. Um, but if we do, we'll post it on all the social media, make everyone aware. So if you haven't already, make sure you go down below, drop a follow on the Twitch, the Twitter, subscribe to the YouTube, all that good stuff so you can see when we go live and videos are posted. Um, but other than that, does anyone have anything to say before we get out of here tonight? Uh, no. No. Have a good week, everybody. I hope I will be here for more of these games. Yeah, hopefully so. Um, but of course, that's one of the things that we'll have to talk about real quick uh, so that way we don't hold anybody up. Um, but other than that, all the 
logos that you see up in the top left. You can find all of their links down below corresponding with their pictures. All of the art that you saw tonight for the logo and the players done by Lady Loxer. You can find her Instagram down below. And make sure that you show each of them some love as well. And other than that, tomorrow night we have some TOA clue. Yes, sir. Nope. Look forward to it. Uh, other than that, everyone have a good night. Bye-bye. Good night.